It's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back to another episode of the Nordic Council in 1945. So I went back to this twice and I played a little bit of it and I said, this will not make a good episode. It'll be boring. I'll be doing nothing. And I was right both times. So I decided to start all over again and just record it, but just well, sorry, play it, but not actually record it. And just keep a log of all the things that have happened before we eventually fabricate Mr. S. So what has happened in the meantime? So, there was a non-aggression pact between the Soviet Union and the UK, so I couldn't fabricate immediately. That's what my initial plan was, just to get into war with them immediately, start beating them up, and that would be kind of fun. The Soviets did declare war on Japan, and so did China, and they ended up... As you can see, like partition in Manchuria a wee bit. That's why it's all a bit wonky here and here. Um, Japan got beaten up. They're at war with pretty much all of the allies. Uh, but they don't seem to be getting any landings or any kind of progress there. So they're just being the island fortress that they uh, have been for the last three years. Um, yeah, so Yugoslavia, which was in the faction of China... Ended up fabricating on Bulgaria. Bulgaria joined the Allies, and then the Allies ruffle stomped Yugo. And that is why all the Allies are invading China right now. I had to switch from free trade to limited exports because my resources were getting tanked. My economy was getting really, really thin. Right now, my economy is recovered now. I'm building airports ready for my attack. Supply issues here are a bit annoying in Finland, but I'm building some airports as well. As well, as well, as well, as well as. My war support was critically low too, about 40%, so I had to do war propaganda against the Soviet Union. Then I was able to switch to all adult serve to actually get some manpower. Manpower was a massive problem. I only had 31 divisions in total of this template. But now I have a total of 90, 120, 120. So that is enough to have a, a very rarely decent front line. I also stopped making submarines as well because they were sapping my manpower. But a total of 44 subs should be enough. And if we capture this coastline here, in that point, I'll not uh, I'll not bother keeping the subs. I'll delete them just to get the manpower back. Just realized as well that we've got nothing to defend this border. So if we make a total of four divisions, pop these boys here, then we'll be ready to declare war. But stability was also really low, so I went for... Why we fight, which gives an extra stability and war support. I went for um, insert, what they call it, improved working conditions too. I've also gone for uh, anti-commie raids and anti-fascist raids to get more support, which results in more stability. I've also changed my doctrine too. Instead of going for deep battle, I have switched out to mass mobilization to get the extra 5% recruitable. We're currently on a mobilization of 18.2%, which has a maximum of 25%. So right now there is still a massive margin. To recruit more manpower probably another 30 army is a possibility but i want a manpower pull just for recovering your losses um yeah is that everything i've started to go for excavation laws quite heavily as god synthetic laws too to try and get as much of my resources we finally balanced our economy i'm not comfortable enough to switch to export focus though we are going to lose half of our resources we might be able to manage it we'll have to import probably a tiny little bit of aluminium but our economy, when it comes down to export, isn't that great anyway. We're only getting six from train anyway. Uh, I've decided to make more civvies as well because we are so heavy on the imports. Making synthetics now in, in, in infrastructure to try and build the resources. And uh, is that it? Yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, boys, so let's resume. Sorry, I wanted to go through all those. I made a huge list of things that I'd adjusted and changed in between. I wanted to keep you guys up to date. I did have a fallback line here just to keep them organized, but for now we're going from here. Yeah, I know a few of these guys are over their limits. So I had to hire these two new generals, but it doesn't matter. I don't mind if they're a little bit over their limit. I'm actually cool with that. We are making a lot of fighters. Strangely enough, I forgot about Fighter 3 and I forgot about Jets as well, which is 945 right now, so I could be pumping those out at an amazing rate, but unfortunately I totally, utterly forgot. I could have got for rocket artillery as well, but I chose... When these guys are pumped out, we'll start the fabrication, then we'll go from there. The Soviet Union currently has 532 divisions. Holy moly, and, and Poland has 65 too. <clears throat> China's on its last legs now. They're getting surrounded, pushed from every angle. 118 divisions sounds a lot, but they're about to be uh, completely stomped. Japan, on the other hand, has shown no signs of faltering. They've got no navy, but they have a decent air force. Well, I say decent now, crippled Air Force. But they have a lot of divisions. The AI just is too stupid. They just, when it lands, it just never thinks to grab the port and to keep defending the port. The UK landed here and held it for ages. 
But eventually they moved a the division out of the way and then Japan just took the port back and ended up losing all the divisions because they were out of supply. Really dumb, but welcome to uh, Naval Invasion AI. It has never been very good. Probably something that needs to improve. Maybe in Man the Guns it will get a lot better. Who knows? Maybe. Who knows? Uh, we'll go for you just because we got the manpower. What we got going on here? We're working on rockets and infantry equipment, so... Working on some of the later techs, as you can see as well, working a wee bit on rockets too. Uh, we've already got our air designer, so that's fine. So much manpower now. I never realized how much manpower you get from our adult service. 20%. Extensive conscription is 5%, so that's a lot of extra manpower. Three times as much manpower. That is insane in the brain. We've also finished our air doctrines as well. And we'll deploy you boys. Pop you guys here, pop you here. Need to make sure you guys are on top. Pop you to the top. And then we'll pop you here. So what is the kind of the plan with this? Well, the plan... Yeah, I guess we could train another four of them. I guess we could train, to be honest with you, another 30. Yeah, we'll train another six, then we'll just deploy them here. And this will be our bonus army. And that's pretty much all the manpower we're going to be able to muster. We're low on guns at the moment. Oh yeah, we are. Maybe we should just give it another month and then we'll start fabricating. And then that'll give us another month to prepare. And we'll go from there. There, 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 there. We could work on rockets if we wanted to, but it's a bit late game. We've got so many convoys. I said we have a lot of convoys. I just literally ate 1,200 convoys in one go. And that's the reason why I stopped making submarines as well, because they were starting to eat into our manpower. Obviously, it's not a good thing long term. Boom, boom, go here. And then make another big stack of fighters as well. All orders, all assigned on to you. So our main army guy, our guy who's our most experienced general, is going to be positioned here to push into Leningrad. I have a funny feeling that we're going to completely cripple them and run into supply problems, but we'll see. Where's the United States? Allies... They're going to send us a total of 1,500 guns in seven days. It'll be way more than enough. I feel like there's some kind of exploit here, you know. Having the AI, like, send you an absolutely crazy ton of guns. I feel like there might be an opportunity then to do some, like, cheesy mechanics and stuff. I don't know. I'll maybe look into that and we'll see what we can do. I realize I've not improved our support department. Support dudes as well, that's... Look at this, we're still getting manpower flooding, that's insane. Then we've got a full army here, everyone into position, boom, I love it, I love it. Alright, we're good now, let's start fabricating. Total of 30 days, hopefully we'll bring in all our allies to do lots of damage. Is China going to be holding on for much longer? And showing they've lost a little bit of... Oh, it's because the islands they've lost, they've lost Iwo Jima. Still have air control though, funnily enough. Okay, let's have a look. How is China doing? I'm actually really surprised how well the game's running right now. It's late game. I feel like it's doing pretty well. They've lost half of the capitulation. This is annoying because the that means that our damage that we've done to China. I don't know, it's a good thing, because Soviets will move their troops down here, won't they? And that'd be cool for us. Questioning their sovereignty. Hmm, thinking face. Emoji. Yes. <clears throat> we are in concentrated industry? Yeah, I could notice by the lot, la the production deficiency we lost. We just lost an absolute crap ton. If we can max these guys out, I'll be happy. Our main attacking army. These generals are only slightly overloaded. They're getting a 25% penalty to their stats. But the good news is they'll also gain skill staffer quicker and that'll, that'll null and void that penalty anyway. Yeah. War bonds. Anti commie raids. More worker conditions. There's no point sitting on political power. Might as well spend it. We're on adult served. We're currently recruited 90% of our total manpower, almost 20. We have a maximum of 25%. So that gives us a lot of legroom. 
We are maxed out now on training for our big, 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 big army. This guy's extra trait that we're not going to use. Currently stands at the moment. We've got all the guns we need. We have more guns that we'll ever need, actually. Are we importing any resources? No. So in that fact, we'll just keep the we'll keep the land lease going. Uh, when it comes down to their navy, though, it's actually pretty big. I wonder how many they've got in the Baltic, though. That is the question. All right, we're going to go, and we're going to have a nice relaxed attack. Just a nice, gradual stroll. I realize there's no attack order. That means we've not been getting planning bonus. Slightly annoying. We'll give it a... We'll give an attack order for just that guy, and everyone else will just chill for now. Yeah, we'll individually micro it, then go from there. That seems okay to me. I'm alright with that. Alright, go. Attack. Boom. Let's go. At last, boys. At last. It is time. The Danish-German War. The Soviet-German War. Soviet-German? Am I going mad? No, it's this one. Danish-German War. I would have never thought that was going to be the case, guys. Dan Daneland and Germland? Madness! Combat width is very narrow, but the amount of firepower we've got is just insane. And we are completely stomping them. This is slightly better than I expected. Um, okay. And we're going to move you here, and then you're going to move. Good. Everyone wants to join. Am I joining the China War? I don't even know. We'll just say yes to everything. Let's have a jolly good war, chaps. Okay, we can reduce nuke tech, which we're going to bother. I've ended way too many games with nuke tech, so I'm kind of bored of it now. I'm burnt out. Republican Spain has 169 divisions. That's a pretty, pretty strong Republican Spain. 139 divisions for France. Gibraltar's fallen. China is collapsing internally. Japan is doing nothing. I really would like to end the war with Japan and China. Just for the sole purpose of reducing game lag. This is what we've reached, boys. This is peak Hoi 4, when everything you do now, you don't do it because you want to conquer. You do it because you want to reduce game lag. <laughs> okay. Oh, the Polish fleet. That's something I didn't look into. So this is the bit we're going to hold here. We're building up our nice big rounded fleet. They don't seem to be doing as well with um, our economy anymore. I wonder why. Not sure why. Okay. Alright, we're all in position now. Let's stop for a moment. We have all max planning bonus. Let's go. But not you, because you've not got an attack order. Anti-tank is done. We're gonna go for more engineers. And we have completely collapsed their front line. That's insane. Uh, we're gonna have you go here, 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 and here. That'll make a nice slice directly in the center. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. I love it. All right, China, are you on your last legs yet? China? Yep, oh, I don't know, 50%. I think with them controlling the north, they've got a, a lot more victory points than they would normally. And Beijing's 50, sorry, 20. Final of the Honda showing no signs of faltering. And we have a massive push within the center. More air crews, oh yeah. Issues with supply in the center. A massive surprise. They're bombing us, oh, surprise. Are we doing anything? We need to go for repair focus. I'm literally going to let the AI take care of this. Not really happy by... Uh, actually, we'll, we'll do one more bunker. Let's not go too heavy on the bunkers. <clears throat> they definitely have any... No reduction. They, they definitely have no issues when it comes down to either manpower or divisions overall. I was about to say half a thousand divisions. I don't think that's correct English, guys. So... Oh, we have the Americans coming in now. So, am I on... Envoy rating? 
No way. We've lost our entire fleet. We have, yeah. We all got sunk. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I guess we make a new one then. Make it in Stockholm. We're just going to go convoy raiding in on this area. How many ships is here? Oh, wow. They've got a decent fleet. Okay. Well, it might be that the Americans and the Brits might be able to do some decent damage there. Northwest Germany. It looks like they're already getting intercepted. These are Poles, probably. Now they're already getting intercepted. It's not a deal. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Hopefully, anyway. Uh, there's a part of me that wants to go export. I feel like I'm going to regret that. No, it's okay. That's alright. We'll get it from the United States. And we'll get it from... States. And you can probably stop sending us guns now. I wonder when the AI kind of like twit ticks on that they're still sending us stuff even though we're not really using it. And we still don't have full air control. That's interesting. But we are shooting down significantly more than they're shooting down us. Holding control there, by the way, if you're wondering what I'm doing. That stops all orders and starts them all over again. All over again. Yep, China's on the way out. Japan is going nowhere. If we can manage to control this area here and then start bombing them from the coastline, that'd be possible. But otherwise, there's just no way we can get our planes in range. The AI is not choosing to build up its uh, islands either. No, they just control the mainland. That's the only bit they've got anymore. Northern Front. Delete this one and then delete the Urals. Boom. Good. Go. Perfect. And these have got no supply now. Five supply? What? Where from? No victory points. To this day, guys, I don't even fully know. Oh, maybe it's the airports. Is it? Okay, let's make a prediction. There's five supply here. And we're going to move on to this airport here. Do you think it's going to drop from five down to zero when he takes this area in the marsh? There's an airport. Five... All right, they're stopping the land lease. That's good. That'll give us our man, uh, convoys back. I'm still showing five. Well, there you go. There goes that theory. Oh, wow. That's cool. How did you manage to get that? Oh, boy. Well, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm actually a little bit impressed. The AI is going all ham on me right now. Pop you here. Pop you Oh look, this is it, the AI just, just oh well, let's move out, move out of Malmo, which has got the port in. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so we have our subs again. Convoy raiding. Pop you, boy. I have a feeling they're going to get intercepted immediately, aren't they? Another news on the western front, eastern front. Things are going very swell. Still five supply. Right, when you arrive, go ASAP. Go, go, go. So how quickly are you gaining staffer? I want to select a guy that's got no skill. So he's gaining it exceptionally slowly. Relying on getting skills, Safa seems a, a bit of a waste of time because it doesn't seem like you do gain it very quickly. Still five supply. This river and these three marshes seem to be generating supply from somewhere. Are you done? You guys are all going to railroad to here now. Probably can draw a whole front line actually. But good. Urals. Boom. What is that? That's ugly. No. Not only do we like want to prevent border guard, but we also want to prevent um, front line gore as well. Come on. Does anyone agree with me in the in the comments? Here, 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 here. Soviet American War. It doesn't look like the Allies are actually. Fire. Whoa, what's happening here? Oh, okay. Oof. For a second, I thought they were breaking through my lines there. 
China, how are you doing? But these wars are coming to an end. 74% towards capitulation. The only time that I've seen Japan fall is if they can completely get battered. Where they run out of divisions because they've lost too much on the mainland. Or they snake down the islands in the north. But a cool multiplayer strap that just snaked down the northern islands. Holy croup. That is so many infrastructure that needs repairing. Those babies to the top. We all in position, boys. Where are you going? No, you're here. All right, good. I think we're good right now. We mobilize a total of 21%. 25% is the max. We've got loads of excess manpower. Does it say the total manpower? Eligible manpower available, 18.7 million. <clears throat> wow. And how much are we immobilized right now? 2.3. We've never lost more. We've never lost like 16, 15 million manpower in previous wars, have we? Something I'm missing. Boom, let's go. What the hell? There's no troops on this front line. The beauty of having so many excess divisions and being so densely packed together is that when I push forward, I don't have to worry about gaps in the front line. That is just not going to happen now. I love it. I love it. I love it. There's suddenly one less thing to worry about. Alright, good. I have to play a bit of a waiting game right now. Managed to push. Oh, I just saw a nuke. Now that is pretty good because that means they're going to reduce their war support. Okay, evidently not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe not. Um. Uh, signal, sure, whatever. It's also a good point of this in the game. If I'm in, if I'm in a big uh, alliance like I am with the Allies, if I go for the tech sharing, that would be pretty good too. Thing back and forth here. I think Beijing would be enough to kick them out completely. bit of issue with uh, resistance. In that case, I'm going to try and reduce as much as I can. Another option here would be to go for the partisan reduction too, as you continue as focus. Resistance one. Hey, I've got my convoys back. Yay. So much infrastructure broken. That's insane. They'll never be able to break through here. There's just too many divisions. They're too thick. Well, I mean, uh, I didn't expect it to go this easily. I guess 40 with divisions late game are just absolutely devastating for the AI that can't handle it. Uh, I guess we can go aggressive now because nothing's happening. We might as well just branch out everywhere and push in all directions. No, I think this is stupid. Why am I going for logistics? I need to go for sub logic. Oh, actually, no. Tech sharing. And I bet I get a 50% bonus. I do. Good, perfect. Nothing else I can think of. Doesn't infantry equipment also affect support teams? Well, I'm not certain about that one. Close air support, why not? All that war propaganda against the Chinese. Spooky. 90% stability whilst at war. Now that's pretty good. mentioned this in a previous video, but I like the idea that when you're at war, your stability is always ticking down. This is a thing that's in um, Black Ice. I think it's a really cool feature. So whilst you're at war, as people tend to not be for war, uh, as the time goes on, stability is slowly ticking down. Very slowly, of course. Something like 0. I don't know, 5 per month or something like that. Only a very small amount. And uh, the result is that as it ticks down, like there gets more and more 
people that are unhappy with how things are going and you have to spend political power to try and balance the situation and i just think that's a really cool concept we have no motorized oh that sucks okay i didn't expect that we have to go for a full 15. i want to add the logistics companies on that's my plan Poland, how are you doing but, oh poland has mutinies See, that would be the downside of having low stability, wouldn't it? I bet their stability is also low because they're getting nuked, but it doesn't show it there. Hmm. Hmm. Making progress here, pushing forward. Divisions, 600 again. We're not actually defeating their divisions. We're not eliminating, we're not encircling them. We're just pushing them back over and over again. Not exactly... Uh, my tactical highlight, boys, but it works, particularly with 40 wits and their big fat stats. Uh, scroll down. One, two. Oh, so much infrastructure has been absolutely shrecked at the moment by looks of things. Are we getting any extra imports? Exports? You extra. Is it worthwhile though? We're getting more civvies. I could go for total mob. So right now we've got lots of excess manpower, so that is a possibility. The way it's looking at the moment, I'm fighting this war independently, so. What the hell are you boys doing, huh? So as the front line now is getting thinner and thinner, as they're spreading out, there's a possibility of encirclements possibly happening. The only area we're having supply problems in the, is in the northeast, the Arctic areas. And it goes without saying, I guess, 17 of 51. Still have, we do have logistic wizards, because you can imagine how bad it would be the situation without the wizard. I realise too that... Oh, I don't know. Maybe the Air Force should be here because this is the main attack force, isn't it? Alright, maybe we should stop. Stop. Let's just stop and recharge for a moment. Yeah. Good. Good, 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 good. Oh my god, we've got so much excess. Uh, do we just go full guns? Why not? Applying Greenland is an issue because the Americans are doing stupid stuff. Which nothing about all right we're stopping and pausing for a moment now so there's more opportunity to do repairs and get them done war bonds is a, is a must was there something we we're gonna go for oh we said we, we were gonna play with the idea and flirt with the idea of total mobilization didn't we maybe we will I don't know Can cause this guy to go. Any issues with weapons? Only a few planes. Engineers. Engineer 4 is good because it has urban attack, doesn't it? Yep. Hang on a sec. Whoa, everyone stop. I told you to stop. Rocket interceptor. To this day, I don't think I've ever built any of those. I ever how I did it, my mistake. We got control now. We have the Baltic is under our control. The French in this war? No, I didn't think they were. Maybe they'll be willing to join when the China situation's boiled up. 81 divisions they've taken a B and it used to be about over 100. I'm gonna go for the next logistics. And then go for you. This reduces supply by 0.19. You only pay for it once because every other um, bonus is passive due to 
not having to pay more equipment for the higher levels. That's interesting, that isn't it? Because in Hearts of Iron 2, if you upgraded something like a better, like a, for instance, a better equipment, um, like a better equipment, hmm, let me think of an example, like a better brigade, you and there wouldn't be a passive bonus for it. You'd still have to upgrade it by assigning industrial capacity to it. I don't know. It's just a thought. We really need mechanized. Mechanized any good for this? Is this actually that's a really good point? If the support equipment, if the support equipment are in, the, sorry, if if the trucks, the motorized are in support equipment, does it affect the hardness? Evidently not. <laughs> so in this case, that most search for mechanized is actually useless. Proved engine. I think we're doing a decent job of cleaning up all this infrastructure. These are the areas that need it the most. And we're pumping out at least 30, 60, 62 civvies. So right now that is pretty good. How is the Soviet Union doing overall? Oh my god, they're halfway towards being capitulated. I feel like we should just launch another attack here. I think we might be able to do that. Motorize, 44 days. I don't want to wait. I think I'll pop you to the bottom. It doesn't result in any more because I need to import rubber. And oil. What's the production now? 30 a day, and that results in 19 days. All right, let's go. Boom, look at all those green bubbles. It's a sight for sore eyes. Knocking out Poland's actually pointless, but I'll, then again, maybe they're a major. And yeah, Poland is a major. There, 150 divisions, 100, oh god, look at how many factories they have, that's insane. They're gonna give us motorized. Greece, you know what, I'm gonna pass on that motorized, thanks. So the China war is slowly but truly getting degraded. Beijing is being knocked on back door by, which is pretty much the end of China. Japan, on the other hand, is doing okay. Oh, center of China collapse. Japan, on the other hand, just laughing at everyone who's trying to land on top of them. The attack on Beijing, maybe? Nope. Nope. It's turning to slightly Drew Dernal mode right now, boys. Sit tight, we relax, and we just watch the game. Yes. Whoa, what's going on here? Run out. What have I run out of? Steel? Taking all these factories from the Soviets, which has done it. Oh, we're in supply again now. That's so awesome. More broken infrastructure for a change. Now, this is a little theory, this, but it feels to me like artillery seems to shred through infrastructure more than tanks do. Is that down to, like, the soft attack having more impact on infrastructure and damaging the roads? Where breakthrough from tanks doesn't have the impact because it's not actual physical damage. Breakthrough is just like a, a force of like reducing armor, like a, an armor point system. I think that's possibly why that's the case. Hmm. Oh, what's this? Managing to be able to push. I can't believe, I can't even imagine what the peace conference is going to look like for this. This is what I'm most excited about. I want to see what China's going to look like if the Allies invade them and take them over. I can't even wait. It's going to look so awesome. Oh my god. It's a race right now. 81% for China. 72% for the Soviet Union. The way things are going at the moment, boys, it's probably looking like... Doing... Do that. There we go. Good. 
One question, this is a good one. If the strength of the division is low due to lack of motorized, this division is low because it's lacking four motorized, does it affect all the stats? It does. So, if you add in a support equipment for signals and logistics, even those aren't frontline attacking divisions, it reduces the attack power of the frontline divisions as well because the strength is a percentage of the overall strength of the division. That's interesting. That is very interesting. That really, really makes you think. Oh, wow. What? All factories? Wonderful. thing going on in the center here. Are we all on aggressive? Yeah, we're pushing again. That's good. Stalingrad is important. We need to get Stalingrad. We just force through the center. Because that's where a large amount of victory points are. We're going to have to take Sevastopol, Stalingrad, maybe Baku. That might be enough to push them over the edge. Well, to be honest, no, we'll still need to take out Poland anyway. So this is the White Army. Is that white? Is that cream color? It's cream color. We're actually struggling to break here. Getting some air support now. Yep. Oh, hello, one division there. Just sat there on your own. Division here that's pushed beyond the front line. Counter-attack from the inside. I like it. Next level strats. Okay. Um, you guys are actually going to go, though. So are you. Well, I'm not going to put them together, because if I switch them around on the bottom line, it's going to switch where they're positioned on the front line, so I don't want to do that. Uh, you guys are all good. I guess I could go signals as well now. Okay, so we've got this in the bottom here. It's these guys, so I'll pop you here. And you guys can go as well. Got some air support, that's good. Just some areas of the front line that are just a little bit thinner than others. The signals on. Boom. Be motorized again. We're lacking support equipment. Boom, boom. There we go. One thing I have noticed is when you do load out a lot of support equipment on your divisions, you do lose some of your attack power. This is pretty much the laziest possible approach to try and take out the Soviet Union. This is pretty much like StarCraft II A move. Colossus, Immortals, A move, boom, GG, you've won. That is pretty much what I'm doing right now. You guys are moving here, you guys are moving here, you guys are moving here, that'll liberate that guy. Holes are about to be demolished, which is good. Am I the only one in this war? I think they keep saying no, don't they? They've lost Beijing. But the war's not over yet. 93%. So many victory points in the north, isn't there? Oh, Poland's collapsed. Nice. You're going to just shimmy around the south there? Oh, can we get in there before they arrive? You go here. Oh, out of supply! Got him, boys. Yeah, we'd like to send his divisions. I'm gonna pass, dude. Thanks, though. 
Alright, I think we could probably launch our final assault now. Oh, look at all those green bubbles. Beautiful. Perfect. Germany is like becoming. Oh, of course, because I, I, I. Germany's. Oh, they're not my puppet anymore. That's interesting. I was about to say I'm recreating my puppet, but I'm not. And they're part of the German East. Oh, prosperity sphere, which is technically Japan. So we're, they're liberating themselves just for us to attack and kill them again. Right. Are we at war with Japan too? Yeah. So they're liberating themselves just for us to kill them again. So when we annex Poland, the land flipped to Germany. But then we're going to occupy Germany once again anyway. <laughs> this is so crazy. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot of troops in Bavaria. Alright. Okay, are we done now? Is this over and done with? Are we done now? Okay, we're pretty much done now. Trying to 96%. So you 83%. Looks like they're catching up on us. Buzz, 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 buzz. Yeah, and you go. A lot of mud around here. Kind of disappointing how if you make a big soft attack division, you still can take on tanks pretty easy. Feels like the stats in the game still don't. I don't know where the game calculates stats, just seems a bit, a bit iffy. He's retreating into the front line. The new Soviet strategy. The human wall. Well, let me right click. I've never seen this before. What the hell's going on here? Oh, is it because I... I can't attack. Because technically it's French territory, so it won't let me. It won't let me attack across the border. Okay. All right. So you guys are going to be positioned here. I'm going to go here. Oh, I can't push into it because it's all surrounded by the French. Never mind. I don't care anymore. I just don't even care anymore. All right. The final push. Alright, go. You guys are just gonna be stranded. You got no supply, they'll basically die, kill themselves off. You guys dead? Kind of. It's almost like French has like wrapped its arms around the Polish and the Germans and said like, You're okay, you're safe here. <laughs> Alright, boom, everyone go. Position. Go here, go here, go here. Here, here, here. There we go. Now everyone's got an air force, a dedicated air force. Can you not break that? Brain penalty is pretty big. I right, just go. G G. Yeah, that's a lot of steel. A lot of aluminium too. The repairing job going, not bad. We'll go back to repairs now. He's going to gain any XP yet? Not really. Oh, he's an infantry expert. Okay. Oh, actually, this guy's pretty good. He's got five attack, only three defense. And there we go. The end. Oh, I don't have any points in this. So they've divided up China there. They have created... And very interesting slither China. And they've 
they've kept these. Oh, the game's pausing. What's happening? Yeah, they've kept all the 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 warlords intact, but this China's a lot larger because it's got all what half, two thirds of Manchuria. Interesting. Okay, please stop telling me about Ireland. I don't care. Uh, Greenland. Is well, that's the first China war over and done with? Soviets next, and then finally Japan. This is a, an extra bonus episode, and that's the reason why it runs on just a little bit longer than the average episode. I probably, if you're watching at this point, you're kind of a little bit confused what's going on. It's like, maybe usually ends the episode at this point. Yeah, but there's no point making this a two-parter. Because it's pretty much the same thing. We're just grinding the front line and moving borders around. That's the same reason why I do these extended, like, time... In between episodes, there's gaps in timeline because it's just boring to watch. If I won't watch it, then I don't think you guys will watch it, so I won't put it in. Uh, the Republic of China has joined the Allied German War. Oh, so it's all the Allies. Okay, we have a big Allies right now. So we've inadvertently made a Cold War. We have this weird pocket inside of Germany. And that's the Japan War. And then we have the final... The Soviet one. So what's crucially important is I get some uh, airplanes here and here. So these areas I need to take. Yeah. And the Soviets are pretty much done and dusted. Oh. So. We'll just grind their front lines so eventually they lose land that hasn't got victory points in them and they'll just collapse the Nordic Council. 529 factories. Come on, don't don't act like you're not impressed, okay? That is glorious. And even have some glorious music to go with it as well. God damn. Russian victory? Russian victory? I don't think so. Go. This. Get it. This. Go for that. What's this? Go for that. I always like want to know more about the geography of um, Russia, you know. Like, how, um, like, the cities that are past the east of the Urals, you know, like, I know, like, their significance in the whole geopolitical situation in Russia, you know. I've always been fascinated by that. You, like the European Russia kind of all makes sense. You can see how it's all interconnected. Maybe less so the south. But it's like the Siberian part of Russia, you know, it's like the the big part. The big one. GG! Alright, so we have the Lion Sarah, the victory points here. Without without a doubt, we are gonna take all of the lands that is rightfully, rightfully belongs to the Finns, right? Come on, that's obvious. Boom. That, I mean, that, that goes without saying, right? That's land that is rightfully ours. And in fact, why not make it... Why not make it that we kind of rightfully control the Arctic as well? Oh, that's going to really annoy you guys, that, isn't it? <laughs> okay, we'll not do that. We'll not do that. There we go, that's good. That's beautiful, right? Come on, that looks okay, right? And because it's the final part of the game, we'll probably just do... And then we... Oh, we got... We have Spain as well. Oh, Spain, change government. Mongolia, I don't care. Uh, change government. Peoples, whatever. Change government. Yep, is that good? Then we make... Um, actually, is anyone actually having any... Oh, the victory points for this. I don't think they are, are they? So, Poland. Have all of this. Um. 
then the Soviets can have this. The Oh my god, boys. I thought the rest of the video was tedious. Wait until you come to this part of it, hey? Well, have you guys enjoyed the series anyway? This seems to be one that I've had a lot of comments about. People saying this is one I particularly enjoyed more than others. I think because the gaming mechanics that I use is something that people found quite fun. So, uh, there will be more of these kind of series coming up where I abuse the game mechanics and try and make funny outcomes. I don't know. It's almost like when I play like this, it's almost like playing with a mod. People do have a, uh, a love for modded playthroughs of Hoi 4. But I don't mind giving you guys that. Yay! Glorious, right? Ah. Oh, we made a kind of cute Poland. It's like Poland before or after the partition. Or somewhere in between. Oh, look at that, it's glorious. The Russian Federation. Oh, and they... They hate us. <laughs> oh, like I care. Alright, I'm going to pop me boys here. Go here. We got the naval techs. Go here. Here. Two boys here. Go here. Lots and lots of bombers to start bombing. Two, three. Alright. So this is the final part. This is probably gonna reach make an, an hour long episode, but it's all good. Oh my god, the airbase is overfilled. Can you like get your planes out of there please? Okay. Ooh. Oh, okay. I, I thought for a second the Japanese had nukes for a moment then. <laughs> okay. Oh, they don't have any ships, so it doesn't really matter about... I was just worrying about... I should make lots of subs, so I've got naval supremacy, but it's not. there's no point, is there? Oh, you moved them out. That's good. Good boy. Alright, so we've got all the planes. Where are the planes? They're all over the... Actually, I'm not bothered about building infrastructure and building airports. We'll just move all the planes over. Make sure they're maxed out. That's good. Good. Five speed. Boom. Let's get this on the roll. This game on the road. Are they going to join the allies? Are we going to have like a super allies? Oh my goodness, boys. We're going to paint the map pink. We still have a Mongolia. Did I not change the government of Mongolia? Oh. Something about the Netherlands? Japan, I honestly think things aren't looking too good for you right now, my dude. I honestly think this is not Japan's brightest hour. Good. Alright, now we just need to wait for the airports to build up. I think construction engineering is probably going to be a good idea. And at that point too, I guess we could start dropping down our... Uh... Oh no, we can't. Because it costs too much political power. Oh, we can't drop down to service by requirement because we're not fighting a strong enough foe. So we can't drop down once, we have to drop down twice. Which costs 300 political power. Oh, that sucks. Because what we do then is that remove that 30% construction penalty. Jet fire that I'm not going to use. Cool. Might as well take one of you boys out of here. Actually, just delete. And that way one of the airports is at least functional. You guys a position. This is kind of like a little, I don't know, like a Pacific colony. Because, I mean, this is kind of historical, right? The Nordic Council are always wanted, like... I've just realized, too. Hang on. Oh, the reason why I occupy this is this is German land, and Germany's in the co-prosperity sphere. That's why I own it completely. Ah, uh, okay. There we go.
Well, so much for taking this land. Britain just landed directly in the center. Probably the only naval invasion that managed to do successfully this whole entire freaking game. Well done. Alright, good. Now I'm going to land here and then land directly here. Enough supply here? Yes. And have we got this one up too? Good. Are we actually doing some groundwork now? Yes, we are. Good. Now we have full air control with a big, juicy penalty to their defense. And we be able to bomb them any opportunity. Air efficiency is a bit lacking, but Belgium has joined the Allies. About time, Belgium. Jeez, come on. Oh, 70 days. You thought this campaign was over, right? You thought it was over. You thought I was going to quit at this point after Japan fell, right? You're wrong. We're going to build a massive... We get a massive, a massive Nordic Council Navy to defeat the British. I'm totally joking. This campaign's over when I beat the Japanese. <laughs> oh, I, can, I can't do any more. Too much. Too much for me. Oh. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna leave that up to the AI. I think what just happened there, my explanation of what just happened there, is Japan got nuked over and over again. Their stability dropped really low, and then they lost Tokyo or. Gawa. Or Hiroshima. And then they um, insta capitulated when they, they lost it because they dropped on them. Oh, wait, maybe not. Oh, actually, no. They may have actually capitulated because they've made their requirement. If they get nuked twice and they've lost Iwo Jima and Okinawa, they can instantly surrender, don't they? And they, they white peace out. They were like, get out. We have an East Co Prosperity Sphere that controls Germany and Italy. Yeah, and this is the world uh, that you know it. 57 minutes, almost 58 minutes for one episode. What do you think about that, guys? Did you enjoy this bonus episode? Did you make it to the very end? Let me know in the comments. Say, I made it to the very end, Dave. Actually, no, let's just say something like a uh, huge ripe banana. So if you reach the end of the video, type huge ripe banana. And then everyone who comes to the video, when they scroll down to the comments before they've got to the end, they'll be right confused. They'll be like, what? Why do people keep talking about huge ripe banana? There you go, boys. You heard it. You heard it first. I hope you enjoyed the Nordic Council series. I had actually a lot of fun doing this. It's really cool playing Denmark, a nation that you would usually avoid because they're not that great. But overall, I had a lot of fun playing this. It was it was a blast. I can't even go extensive anymore because I'm not at war. <laughs> so I have to drop all the way down to limited conscription, which costs 450 political power. Thanks, Paradox. Thank you. Oh, that is beautiful, right? Look at that. Look what I've made. I've made a beautiful world. I love it. Anyway, apart from that, have a good day. I'll see you guys next time. And peace out. Bye-bye.